to give us some time to make connection with the breath. So as you rest here on the floor, just let your body feel heavy. Let it gradually start to sink down into the earth beneath you. It might feel nice to let your legs go long, or maybe you feel better with bent knees, whatever posture feels best to you. And then I want you to become aware of the breath in such a way that you start box style breath or box breathing. This is pretty simple. As you inhale, you'll follow your breath up the side of a box. You'll pause and hold the breath as you slide across the lid or the top of the box. Exhale breath will happen as you down the other side, and then pausing, holding the breath as you trace it along the bottom of the box. So perhaps you inhale for four, hold two, three, four, exhale one, two, three, four, hold one, two, three, four, inhale. Back to more natural pace of breath, perhaps stretching the legs long down the mat if they aren't already. Maybe arms even reach up over the head, making the body nice and long, taking a first big deep stretch from the toes to fingertips. And then as you feel ready, we'll start to bend those knees and walk them up the mat, maybe even hugging them into the chest, and I think that's next, or rocking side to side. Maybe placing the hands on the tops of the kneecaps and giving them kind of a circular rolling motion as you hug the knees in and let them move out. And then take them the opposite direction, hugging them in, letting them go out. Maybe your right knee stays hugged into your belly as you release your left leg nice and long down the mat. And then switch out your knees. The opposite knee comes into the chest, let the other one go long. So you're just holding it long enough to kind of give it a, a nice hug and then switch. Go ahead and go back to that first leg, give it a nice hug, and then switch again. Go back to that second leg. Coming back to the first leg you started with, hug it in and now give your ankles a little attention. Roll the ankles, point and flex the toes. Maybe even shifting your grip to the back of the thigh will elevate that foot towards the sky. You've got a nice big hamstring stretch here. Maybe your hands slide up the back of the leg if that feels good to you. You can even turn into a spider pose, pulling the bottom foot up off the ground, chest up off or back up off the floor. And then let everything soften on that first leg. So bend knees, bring the heads back down to the ground. Set yourself with both feet on the mat, both knees bent to face up towards the ceiling. Hands are gonna settle on either sides of the hips. We're gonna stick a bridge pose in here before we do the second side. So hands are rooted into the ground. Big inhale, lifts the hips up off the earth. Pull. And exhale your breath. Hold. And inhale. Exhale, slowly start to bring the hips back down to earth. Pull the other knee into the chest. So now you're back to your second side. Knee hugs in nice and close. Let the leg go long if that feels good. Give your ankles that same attention you did before. Pointing and flexing the toes, rolling around the ankles. 
Maybe shifting the grip to the back of the thigh, giving yourself that big hamstring shape. Perhaps your bottom foot even comes up off the earth. You might slide your hands up the back side of this leg, giving yourself that spider shape again, if that feels okay to you. But always knowing this can be softer. We can bend the knees if we need to. Perfect. Slowly bring that down. Both feet are gonna find the mat again. Let's look for that same bridge. Now, when you look for bridge in yoga, your heels are walking as close as they can get to your glutes. Your feet are in two straight lines down your mat, hands settled on either sides of the hips. Big inhale breath lifts the hips up off the ground. And you're in bridge pose. It might feel nice to kind of walk the shoulders just slightly underneath of you now. Maybe you're feeling a little bit open. Not entirely open. We haven't done a ton for your chest, that's for sure. So if that doesn't really feel very good to you, you can keep a more relaxed state. A little bit of tension between the thighs. Next natural inhale. Let's lift our heels up off the ground. Good. And then just slowly start to lower back down. Get those shoulders out from underneath of you. Ease down from the shoulder blades all the way down. The last thing to hit the mat is going to be those heels. So let yourself lower each vertebra into the ground and then drop your heels. Nice. Soles of the feet start to walk towards one another. Separate the knees wide on your mat. Take a bound angle shape, but reach the hands up over the head and let them stretch long towards that wall behind you. One more nice breath here. Slide the hands along the floor or just pick them up and bring them to the outer edges of your knees. Inhale, breath stands these knees up towards the sky. Beautiful. Exhale, release. Pull the knees into chest and just rock around. Any kind of tension in your low back, let's give it a little bit of time. And then we'll start to move up towards a seated posture. So you can roll to one side and push off the ground, or you can kind of rock and roll on your spine until you're ready to come to your seat. Once you find that seat, let's get tall with the spine, close the eyes, reach out with your hands, look for the floor on either side of your mat and just reconnect with that strong, stable breath. Perhaps closing the mouth and letting the breath only be through the nose. Give it one more solid breath. Beautiful, nice intention through those sits bones. We'll take our time to reach hands high above the head. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart. Transitioning to table, wrists might come underneath the shoulders. Knees are gonna go underneath your hips. So just take your time to find what a tabletop's gonna look like for you today. If you know you have sensitive knees, feel free to go ahead and kind of play around with the mat a little bit, maybe rock back and forth. Placing weight back to the feet and then up into the wrists. Maybe it feels good to even sway side to side or kind of take like a circular motion with your hips. All right, and then let's find cat cow. Wrists on your shoulders, knees on your hips, couple cat cows. Belly drops down towards the earth as you inhale, chin lifts, tail lifts. Exhale, breath rounded back, rounded spine. Take your time, a few more rounds, just like that. Belly dropping down, spine rounding up. Cat cow is pretty basic in yoga. It's a good opener for the front of our chest. And then when we exhale, we've got that rounded spine. We're thinking about lifting the spine up towards the sky. <clears throat> Perfect, last one, belly drops down. And then rounded spine. From this shape, go ahead and bring it back to a stable tabletop. Right hand moves underneath your face. Left hand reaches up towards the sky. Give yourself a nice opener through the chest. As you exhale, slide this hand across the mat, palm facing up. Inhale, bring it back up to the sky. So it's just kind of sweeping back and forth across your mat as if your fingertips kind of 
like the edges of a broom and you're kind of getting a little sweep right here across the back. One more time. Next time you're back up in the sky, stay there. Roll that wrist that's in the sky. And then take your time. Hand that's in the sky is going to come down, palm facing earth, reach straight out in front of you. And then bring it back to the mat. Switch sides. Opposite hand underneath the face. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, sweep your mat. So we did this about three or four times last time. We should be feeling some good twisting through the core, some nice opening through the chest, maybe even the outer edges of the shoulder blades. Obviously, if anything hurts, we want to kind of draw back a little bit. Next time that hands back up to the sky, let's pause there. Roll that wrist on the hand that's in the sky, take it forward and back. And then just reach straight out in front, palm facing down, hand comes down and finds the earth. Take your hands one big hand step out in front of your traditional table, curl your toes, and just shift to a half plank. So this should feel like you're trying to do a push-up, but you're still on your knees. When you feel ready, you're going to take a tricep push-up. So elbows will bend back towards your body, and then you'll push back up. One more just like that. Exhale on your way down. Inhale on your way up. Curl the toes, lift the hips first, downward facing dog. Remembering down dog, your gaze or where you are looking is back towards your toes. You're trying to see if you can make an upside down V with your body. So you want your spine to stay nice and long. Your fingers are spread really wide. So even though your hands are only about shoulder distance apart, let your fingertips spread out like you're kind of spreading the puppy paws as far as they can go. Excellent. Take your time, drop your knees back to earth. Put yourself in that same half plank. We're going to do our first little flowing movement with some strengthening for our arms. As you exhale, you'll lower down. Inhale, push back up. Exhale, curl toes, lift the hips. Exhale into your downward dog. Inhale, knees will drop back to earth. Exhale, give yourself that push up again. Inhale it back up. Exhale it to down dog. A lot of strength here. Inhale, knees drop down. Keep the core engaged. Exhale, little push. Keep the elbows close. Inhale up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Stay in your down dog this time and walk it out. Bend your knees. Play with the weight in your feet, putting it towards your heels and then towards your toes. And then start to take small steps with your feet. Let's walk them up towards the front of your mat. Hang in a forward fold. This just means the top of your head is pointing down towards the ground. And you're giving time to kind of shake it. Yes and no. Beautiful. Soft bend in your knees as you inhale, come up, half lift, long spine, and point the top of your head straight out into the room. Exhale, fold. Plant those feet on the earth. Big inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, back. Inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale, come up halfway, long spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach hands high as they can go. Exhale, take that same practice. This is just a half sun citation. Doing beautifully. Let's go one more time. Up. Exhale, take it down. Good form. Inhale, come up halfway, long spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, plant the feet, reach the hands up. Exhale, take it out for a cactus. Inhale, reach your hands as high as they can go. Bend the knees, first chair pose. So think about chair as you're bending your knees to sit back into something invisible behind you. You can have soft elbows, soft shoulders, but you might flip your pinkies and face one another. See if you can sink just a little bit deeper in that chair. Really turn on some heat in your legs. Let your knees be bending in the same directions as your big toes. And then fold into the earth. Good work. 
Take the head yes here. And no. Hands plant, right foot steps back. Drop the right knee down to the ground. And then sweep the hands up to the ceiling. See if you can do a nice kneeling lunge here. Front foot, let it come out from underneath of you. Get into that shape where you can kind of sink into your front knee. Let these hands reach nice and tall. Now, whatever knee you've got forward, you're going to let that hand, your left hand, drop as you reach over with your right fingertips. Really opening up this side wall. Let all these intercostal muscles have some good space. Beautiful. Inhale, reach this back up. You're going to drop opposite hand and test your balance. Reach over to the other side. Inhale, bring the hands back up. Exhale, go ahead and cartwheel this forward. Back toes curl under. Feel free to use blocks if you brought those. Knee lifts up off the earth. If you don't have blocks, no worries. Fingertips can touch the ground, or maybe you even use a little leg strength and you just kind of hover with those hands. Wherever you are today. All right. Let's see if we can drop hands into the earth if they aren't already there. Step this front foot all the way back, but we're going to lift it to a three legged dog. So that puts your left foot high into the sky, and your right foot is on the earth. Hold for two more breaths. Now this lifted foot's going to step all the way back up here to the front of your mat. See if you can take it all the way through the middle again, and then drop that back knee down. You've still got the same foot at the front of your mat. This time you're going to walk it over closer to the left edge of your mat. Hands can go in the center here for a lizard, or you can plant right hand on the mat, start to reach behind you with your left hand. You can kind of just point off into space as you look over that left shoulder, or you might choose to bend this back knee, reach back with the hand to get a nice big quad stretch. It's going to be completely up to you. Beautiful. Take the hand that's reaching behind you, let it cart go forward, look for the mat again. Step this front foot all the way back. You're going back to that three-legged dog for one breath this time. Hold. Drop the foot down into the mat. Knees drop to ground. Take that tricep push up. Inhale it up. Downward facing dog. Now, of course, you can drop to your knees here and take three breaths in child's pose if that fits you better this morning. But feel free to just kind of move with what feels good to you. You're going to notice that there's a lot of arm strength happening today. In addition to really stretching out our hips and our low back. Beautiful. When you feel ready, small steps with your feet. So lift back to that down dog, start walking the feet forward or take a nice little leap. Find yourself in a forward fold with the head hanging, shake it yes. Hello. Yoga flow is supposed to get you moving a little bit today. Hopefully you feel good moving. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Feel strong, plant those feet. Inhale, reach it up, find the cactus on your exhale. Reach tall and then sit back into your invisible chair. Maybe your elbows bend to kind of soften here in those shoulders. Yoga is about finding that balance between effort and ease. Let's see if you can soften a little bit more in the shoulders, but sink a little deeper in those knees. Balancing the weight throughout your feet. Exhale, hold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. This time your left foot steps back. Left knee hits the ground. Take your time to get this front foot kind of out from underneath of you a little bit. Sink into that lunge. Hands are going to come up if they aren't already. And then start thinking about this knee. Whatever knee is forward, that hand's going to fall first. And you're going to reach over the body. So for me, it's my right knee forward. Same for you. I'm going to leap 
Beautiful. Switch. Let the balance take over on this one as you lean slowly the other direction. Your hands probably don't touch the floor because we don't want to collapse our shoulders. We're trying to keep tall with the spine. Lift through those fingers. Yes. Beautiful. Hands come up. Cartwheel them forward. Curl the toes under on this back foot. Start thinking about strength here. Put some length in that back leg. Hands might stay on the floor on a set of blocks, or you might turn this into something that's more of a hover, where you lift these hands up off the earth, you put lots of strength into the legs. But just know where you are. You don't always have to be taking the highest level of everything offered. You might decide that, you know, something halfway feels better to you today. Okay. All right, let those hands settle into the earth. You're going to step this front foot all the way back. Three-legged dog, three breaths. So what that means is when that leg is lifted, your toenails on that lifted leg are pointing down towards the floor. Your hips are square. I can come back, set something on your back, and it wouldn't slide completely off, though it would probably have a little angle to it. But try not to open the hip too much. Give yourself one more breath. And then a big step of that foot all the way through to the front of the mat. That knee might drop on the way. You know, you can. It doesn't have to be pretty. Just get it up there. Good work. Good. That's all right. That's all right. All right, you got that front foot forward. Start walking it over. Put it over towards the other side of your mat. This is your lizard shape again. So your hands might kind of hang out in the middle here. Some of us would like this. Others are going to be really bendy, and you're going to want to drop your forearms if that's where you are. Otherwise, you might take this right hand, let it reach back, look over that right shoulder, maybe just kind of hang there, let it kind of point. Yes. Or you might choose to bend this knee, make full connection to give yourself a big quad stretch. Good. Those of you at home, don't be straining your neck to try to see the screen. Relax the neck. Perfect. Take your time. Bring the hand back forward. Toes curl under. You're going back up to that same three-legged dog. This time, only one breath. Lift it up. Foot comes back to earth. Get yourself in the down dog. Drop your knees to the ground. Inhale, breath here. Knees drop. Exhale, tricep, push up, let it go. Gaze slightly out in front of you. Test the arm straight. Lift it back up, and then you're in that downward facing dog. Nice work. Hold the down dog, or maybe it feels good to drop to your knees. You know what? If your wrist ache a little bit today, or you're just not feeling full energy in the tank, that's okay. Listen to your physical body. You can give it rest when it needs, or you can push it when it wants a little challenge. All right, slow steps with your feet. Take your time. Move your feet up towards your hands, looking for that same forward fold. Head is down towards the earth, shaking yes and no. And then let's half lift. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold. Plant the feet. Big inhale. Reach up. Look up. Exhale, pack this. Beautiful. Hands come in, just let them settle at your heart. Close your eyes. Feel grounded through all four points of the feet. And find yourself in just a standing Tadasana or mountain pose. For this mountain pose, we're going to take about three or four more full breaths. Putting a little weight towards that right foot. Let your hands drop down to either sides of the hips. Right leg is going to become your standing leg. So if you're not all the way up here to the front of the mat, let's go ahead and step up there. 
so that when we do step backwards, you have plenty of space behind you. So right foot becomes your standing foot. Left foot's going to come up off the earth, and we're just going to see if we can test a little balance. Now, if you're close to a wall or you want to get off your mat for a minute, use a wall. You're always welcome to do that. We'll just see if we can hold. See if we can just be down here. One more breath. All right, lifted leg's going to go back behind us. Send it long behind. Just let the toes plant and find a crescent. So the toes are on the ground. Heel is lifted. Front knee is bent. Check your alignment of your front knee. You want it in line with that ankle. Yep, and then the arms can come up. Now the same stretch we took when we were on our knee. We've got um, right knee forward, so drop the right hand. Reach over with that left arm. Give yourself some opening. Beautiful. If that crescent's too wide, you can always make your stance shorter. Bring your hands up, and then we'll go the other way. Opposite arm drops. It's a big test of balance. So if you feel a little wobbly, that's all right. All right, hands lift back up. Now I'm going to take a big step forward with this back foot, and I'm going to sweep my hands down by my hips while I do it. So I'm going to step up. Hands come down, see if we can lift that foot. From there, see if that foot can come over and just rest above your knee. A little sink. If you've got the strength in your legs today, the inhale brings you up. The exhale sits you back down. Otherwise, toes can be on the earth, and you can do the same thing with nothing lifted. Still going to test your balance quite a bit, so if you feel wobbly, Okay. All right, last one. Don't give up. Stay with me. All right, uncross the legs, let them settle into the earth. Now, when you just do a nice half sun salutation, so close the eyes, reach the hands up. Exhale, fold. Now, when you get to the ground, I want you to shake off all that wobbliness. Give your head a big shake. Say, yes, I can do this. It's only yoga. It's not a big deal. My balance is a mess. Shake it off. All right, inhale, bring yourself up halfway. Find some positivity in that breath. Exhale, fold. Now, when you stand strong, I want you to reach your hands as high as they can go to the sky. Make yourself long and tall. Exhale it out, cactus shape. Bring the hands to your heart. Walk to the front of the mat if you aren't there, and close your eyes. Weight and stability into your left foot. Just think about the four corners of that foot. Think about lifting up your toes a moment, spreading them out, shaking off any attachment you have to balance. Imagine this is just the game. Foot becomes our standing leg. Starts to lift the other one up, maybe eyes open. Take your gaze. <laughs> Take your gaze to something not moving. So look out in front of you, find a little defect on the floor. Smile at it. It's just balance. Stepping this foot back behind us, go into the high crescent again. Now check your front knee. Make it go in line with that ankle. See if you can get your hips square forward. The knee that's forward, that's the arm that's going to drop first. We're going to reach over with the other arm. Same side body stretch. Now your crescent might be really big. Wide stance between the feet. It might be a little more narrow. Start to bring your hands back up. Switch. I'll see that balance again. A lot of low back issues that we find come from a disconnection in opening up these side walls. So that's why there's a lot of concentration today on making sure those intercostal muscles get some opening. Perfect. Hands come back to center. We're going to take and shift the weight forward, that big stance. Now, when you shift forward, hands drop by the hips. Foot comes up. We start thinking about bringing it over to that other leg. Remember, it can be above the knee in a figure four, or it can be tapped here on the earth. Maybe you exhale and sink just a little bit down. And you look back up. Just kind of play. 
observations are loud. So if you start to think, you know what, I was a lot better on the other side, or hey, this side feels better, those observations are okay. Now let's just quickly dismiss them. Try to stay right where you are. Find that spot again. Put your eyes on it. Give it one more time. And then just unwind. And take that same half sun salutation. So big inhale, reach up. Cleanse it away. Let go of that shaky balance. Fold. Take the head. Yes. I got this. It's just yoga. I'm here to breathe. I'm here to stretch. I'm here to clear my mind. Just let it go. Inhale, come up halfway, long spine. Exhale, fold. Beautiful. Inhale, reach up, look up. Let those fingertips find the sky. And then we'll just tap this again. Hands come in, find your heart. Close the eyes, give yourself a nice reset. Let the spine get really tall. Maybe your feet even come all the way in to touch one another. And you turn this into yet another test of balance. Think, how can I balance when I've got two feet on the ground? Notice. Notice the subtle shifts of weight between the right foot and the left foot, front of the foot, back of the foot. And then I want you to start picturing your pelvis or the middle of your body like a bowl of water. Now, if your hips start to tip forward because we're sticking out our rear, your bowl will shift and it will tip if the pelvis is shaped kind of like a bowl. Let's see if we can get those hips slightly under us, not completely tucked, because then we'll still spill that bowl of water down the back of us. So just seeing if you can build that best tall spine, you'll start to even feel the hip flexors become engaged as they visit here. Beautiful work. Hands drop down by your hips. Inhale, breath lifts right foot up off the floor just for a moment, and then send it back all the way to the back of your mat. This time it gets to spin and turn. I'm going to shift just so I don't confuse you or me. But that back foot's parallel or flat. Put the back of your mat and your front knee is forward. Your arms shift out to a long T shape. You're in warrior two. All right, for your warrior two here today, when you feel ready, front hand's gonna flip towards the sky, and then you're just gonna lean away from the front of your mat. Now this can feel really lazy if you want it to, or you can take a nice deep bend in that front knee, spread your feet a little wider, really open up the side body. Back arm's not putting any extra stress on this leg. Beautiful, bring it back to warrior two, front elbow drops, Hand that's in the sky is going to point forward to the front of your mat. Fingertips pointing, palm of the hand down towards earth. Now I want you to circle this. So take this hand that's pointing to the front of your mat. Let it go down, point towards your toes. And then take a full circle motion until it comes back up. So your wrist is going to change a little bit. You're going to feel some natural movement in that shoulder. Do one more full circle. Now, if you're doing this right, you'll feel, right's the wrong word, but if you're doing it best for your body, you're going to feel your obliques talk, you're going to feel your hip flexors talk. Pause it at the front. Beautiful. Back to your warrior two. Both hands cartwheel forward towards the ground, giving yourself a chance for a vinyasa here. Front foot steps back. Now, you can follow me if you're new, you're a little bit unsure how to do this. Take the knees to the earth. Exhale, lower down all the way with your belly on the ground. Hands on either sides of the heart. Gentle press. Just a little lift. Exhale, back down. Move your hands deep back by your breastbone. Curl the toes. And lift the hips. Downward facing dog. Beautiful work. One more nice breath there. Walk your hands this time towards your feet. You're going to kind of bear walk to the 
back of your mat. And then inhale, reach the hands as high as they can go. Take your cactus. Hands come into the heart. And just settle here. One more breath. Perfect. With the eyes closed, trust your mat. Take about three or four slow steps forward. Closing the eyes. All right, gentle blink. See where you are on your mat. Hands are open. Eyes are open. All right, left knee lifts this time. Left foot steps back. Spin it so it becomes flat or parallel with the back of your mat. Front knee is bent. See if you can check that alignment. Heel might be in line with your big toe. Maybe your instep. The idea is to see if we can get these hips to point straight to the side. Perfect. So, like it. See if it's angled to the side. And then reach the hands out. Now, if you feel at all off balance, check things around. Move this front foot, make it deeper, make it fuller. Those of you who are already in your home, Reach a little further, flip the front knee and take that slow motion reverse foyer. So we've still got a decent bend in this front knee. We've got opening through this side body. And again, this can feel really lazy and we don't have to put much into it if that's where we want to be today. Or we can reach through those fingertips and really extend through that front knee, maybe trying to get that front thigh parallel with your mat. Back up to your warrior two elbow looks for your knee, perhaps. Fingertips reaching up and forward and then circle it again. And down towards earth. And then lift that circle. So again, if you're taking your time, if you're being intentional, if you're listening to your body, you're going to feel this all over. Pause in that warrior, or that side angle rather. One more breath. Back to that warrior two shape. Option here for your vinyasa again. Hands cartwheeling forward. You can step foot to the back of the mat, go straight to down dog or child's pose if you don't have a lot in your tank. Or drop those knees, take a nice easy vinyasa, belly to the ground. One cobra. Walk those hands back, lift the hips, downward facing dog, or maybe child's pose is a good home for you right now. You decide where your body's feeling its level of comfort, where it wants to be as you take three more breaths. So a good mix in the room today. We've got some in child's pose, some in down dog. I love that. That's my favorite means you're listening to your own physical body, you're deciding what plan is best for you. Those of us who are in down dog, go ahead and drop those knees to the earth. I want all of us who are in child's pose to come up just high enough that you can widen your knees. Let them go as wide as the mat. See if you can make your big toes touch one another and then start to lay your chest down towards the floor. Those who have a block with them in practice today, you might bring that block to the middle of the mat. If you don't have a block, that's fine too. I'm going to show it to you without a block as well. If you've got the block on the earth, maybe your forehead goes on that. Or if you're looking for a little extra, you're going to put your elbows on it. When you are ready, we're going to put the elbows into the earth. Hands will come to a clap. And then we're going to tuck these hands behind the back of your head. Now, the reasoning behind this is because we've done a lot of work today with your triceps and your upper back and shoulders. Let's give them some attention. So if you are not feeling any stretch in your triceps, you're going to walk your elbows more towards the front of your mat and closer to one another. If you're feeling too much, walk your elbows closer to you, to your body, and widen your elbows a little.
Those who have a block, you're welcome to put your elbows on it, or you can even reach your arms long. Put your forearms on. The idea is to just give that upper back a little chance to relax. Really feel the stretch. One more nice breath. Perfect. Start to lay those hands back onto the ground. Pull them in a little closer to you, and we're going to shift to our knees. Now pull those knees back in towards the middle of the back. I'm going to give you two options here. If you feel comfortable with your hips sitting all the way back onto your heels with a nice tall spine and kind of a modified hero, sit like me, find this spot. If that doesn't feel great to your legs or your knees, maybe you feel better just kind of coming up to a high knee, you can take that shape. But if you feel okay here, let's visit that. Reach the hands out to the side, but I want you to flex your fingers up towards the ceiling. Now, immediately when you do that, you should start to feel this kind of chatter in your forearms. Now, we're not gonna be here too long, but see if you can take your right ear towards your right shoulder. And then lift that head back up. Other ear to other shoulder. And then lift that head up. Chin towards your chest. Relax the wrists. Hold the wrists. And then take your hands to fists and then roll your wrists again. Sweep your head a little bit right, a little bit left. And if you're talented enough to do that and roll your wrists, great. Relax those hands, let them kind of hang down by the sides and just flip the head back over spine, roll the shoulders, close the eyes. Things kind of settle on down in place. All right, shifting from here, we'll just rotate to a tabletop or move to a tabletop, wrists under shoulders, separate the knees a little bit, make them about hip distance apart, take a quick peek back between your knees, make sure you can't see your toes, and then cat cow. Belly drops down on your inhale, back rounds on your exhale. Give yourself two more of those. Really build a little rhythm. Invite in a little freedom through that breath. Start crafting that thank you note. The end of our practice today is always a thank you. Starting with our physical body, we'll start to shift onto our seat. So maybe you walk those knees forward and then just sit over your heels or maybe slide the legs around side, whatever you like. Let your legs go long. Start thinking about those legs. Just a nice, beautiful piece of stationary hands. Lift up, right that thank you note to the physical body, welcoming a nice long stretch here with the spine, hands on either sides of those legs. I hinge right here at my hip creases. I try to fold right over that spot rather than rounding through my upper back. This isn't a sit and reach test like we used to do in PE. It's just a spinal stretch. Those hamstrings open. Again, just a little thank you. Beautiful. Start to lift the chest back up. Bend the knees. Hug them into the body. Head might come down. You might lift your toes. You might roll your ankles one at a time or point to flex the feet. Or you might just stay still and give yourself a nice hug. Perfect. Spine coming back up tall. You're going to look over your shoulder and you'll probably realize you're a little further back your mat than you want to be. So scoot your hips up about halfway. Start to roll back onto your back and we're going to go right into that figure four shape that we took in balance. Let your right knee be the one that your left foot is going to come over and sit on top. So it's just below that knee, maybe on the edge of the thigh there, and you create a little figure four shape or a pigeon on your 
back. You might choose to reach your left hand through the opening in that figure four hole that you created. And the hands reach around and grab on the back side of the thigh. And you don't have to stay completely still. In fact, it probably feels nice to kind of sway a little bit here. Lifting that foot up off the floor, maybe even hugging it a little closer, letting that outer hip get a nice stretch. Close the eyes if you feel comfortable doing so. Let it go. Everything else that's trying to pull you out of this room can certainly wait. Beautiful. As you feel ready, take your time to unwind from that figure four. Maybe it feels good to hug both knees in for a moment before switching sides. You might decide to bring the other foot down to the earth as you set up this time. Maybe your left leg goes down, foot on the floor, and then you decide to connect for that figure four. You might rock around. You might reach and grab. Just let yourself have some space here. So again, just like all the stretches we've done today, all the movements, the poses, the asana that we've taken our physical bodies through, we can always make little variations, little adaptations, little modifications, what word you like to make the poses fit you. So if something feels like, you know, I'm not really sure why we're doing this, or I don't really feel it in the right place, move around, adjust. Start to create spaces that make these poses feel like yours. You were just given an idea, and now you're running with it. As this side starts to feel complete, we might find ourselves unwinding again, hugging those knees into chest this time, rocking a little right and left. Maybe it feels good to move both hands towards the backs of the thighs and just elevate the feet towards the sky. If a shoulder stand is part of your practice, it could go right here. Kind of roll up onto the shoulders, placing the hands onto the low back and take a shoulder stand. If you brought a block with you today and you want to take yourself into a modified shoulder stand, we'll put that block underneath the low back and find a waterfall. That certainly would be a nice option here as well. But the idea is just to invert us for a few moments. Get our feet up above the head, above the heart, recirculate our blood. Give our nervous system a chance to reset as we flip upside down. But sometimes that shape's a little too big, so if you feel like you need to bend your knees, go for it. And then those of us who found ourselves inverted, just take your time transitioning back down easing those feet back towards the earth, knees bent towards the ceiling. Arms might stretch out to T, or even just like a cactus, where they can rest on your, hands can rest on your belly. And let your knees start to windshield wiper right and left. Now some of us are gonna find when we take this twisting motion that it feels really nice in the spine, and we'd like to kind of pause on either the right or the left. Feel free to do that. If that twist feels nice to you today, you can make it static. You can stay still for a couple breaths and then go to the other side. Where others are gonna find it a little bit more therapeutic to their back to keep the motion moving. So it's up to you whether you stay still or create some movement.
And then I want you to just listen to your own body. If there are any other final movements that feel like, you know, it might feel nice to get one more stretch for this part of my body in, go ahead and listen. Anything that you do after a run or aerobics class or any kind of you know, physical activity that you would do as a cool down stretch, that can fit right here. It doesn't have to be a fancy yoga pose. It can just be anything that feels good, kind of relieves some tension hiding in your arms or your shoulders, your back, your hips, your knees. But we're just working our way to that grand finish. That final savasana or that final resting pose. So if nothing is speaking and you'd rather just get still, go ahead and find your place where you're going to rest. Traditional savasana looks like legs long down your mat, heels planted, but then you just let your toes kind of roll towards the outer edges of your yoga mat. That gives your hips a little bit more space. Maybe your hands come equal distance away from the hips, but you flip your palms to the ceiling. That's going to give your shoulder blades a little bit more space. You're going to soften the muscles of your face, your eyebrows, your cheeks, your chin. Of course, knowing that that traditional pose doesn't have to be the one you finish in. If you'd like to roll and just rest on one side, maybe laying on your right hand side, or you want to bend your knees, take time to find whatever final place you'd like to rest. And you're going to stay there for the last few moments of this class. This is where you allow your breath to finalize that thank you note. Not only thanking your physical body for its ability to move in your practice today, but thanking your mind as well as we give it an opportunity to let everything sift and settle back into place. To sift means that we examine either our thoughts, our body thoroughly, we isolate what's most important and useful. And then we just kind of let everything else go. That's what this final note, this final space is for. Your eyes are closed, your breath is relaxed, and you just sift and let go.
Really starting to become aware of your breath. Allow gentle movements back into your body. Maybe your fingers wiggle a little bit. Yeah, just a gentle movement to the toes. Maybe the back of your head stays planted on the earth. But you let your nose shift side to side as if you were hanging across the ceiling with the tip of your nose. And we take our time to bend their knees, maybe hug them in close, rock around on the spine, wake it up just a little bit, rolling to the right when you feel ready, maybe even using your right arm like a pillow. Take a side line savasana where you curl into a fetal position, hugging knees close into the body, letting the body feel safe, comforted, relaxed. Keeping the eyes closed as much as you feel comfortable doing so. And then we'll just work our way back up to a seat. With no pressure, take your time. As we start to conclude today's class, I'll leave you with this final reading. Finding your way to your seat, perhaps palm to palm with a tall spine, eyes closed. Today's class finishes with, depending on ourselves. Faced with crisis, the man of character falls back on himself. He imposes his own stamp of action, takes responsibility for it, and makes it his own. Ultimately, we're responsible for what we choose to do or not to do. If we're lucky, we have great support from friends and family, but at some point we make decisions and take responsibility for them, right or wrong. It's up to us. We take a deep breath, consider advice we've been given, draw on our experience, and then do what we think is best. If things work out, we are relieved. If they don't, we accept responsibility and move on. I get lots of advice and support, but I recognize that in the end, it's up to me to make the major decisions of my life. It's up to me. Taking a nice full deep breath in through your nose. Release any final tensions hiding in the body, let go. I greatly appreciate you making this time for yourself, not only just to get your physical body up and moving on this beautiful morning, but for you to give your mind a little chance to sit and settle as well. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you again. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you guys.